The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Exolix, a privacy-focused, non-custodial, instant crypto exchange. Go to exolix.com to enjoy secure and completely anonymous swaps with no KYC or sign-up. Swap between Monero and 2,000-plus assets at the most competitive rates and with no limits. Exolix.com, your fast and secure way to privacy. Hey, guys. All right, hey, buddy, what's going on, man? <clears throat> I'm just um, doing good, man, doing good. I got to say, I guess I have to start out. Bro, I did warn you. <laughs> I said I said that these guys have tricks up their sleeve. I, you know, I noted that they they still have firepower to delist. Um, you know, I said, hey, this is kind of like, this is the top of our trend for the past like three years. They're, there's a possibility that, um, you know, that something could happen. Like expect that they've still got tricks up their sleeve. So, um, but no, I mean, maybe I could have been, I wasn't quite Nostradamus enough for, uh, for myself, for my fans. I guess I have to issue, issue an, a formal apology for um for not knowing that it was Kraken that was going to do list across the EU. I apologize, I'm sorry. I'll try to do better. <laughs> you you weren't surveilling the Monero blockchain to see to see to see the Monero moving to Kraken and being sold and whatnot. You weren't you you you're not hey, capable maybe, of that. <laughs> maybe that's what those transaction counts. Those extra right. transaction counts were like s somebody knew, right? I, I wonder who's selling, right? Who 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 are the assholes who are selling? Like how many how many inside how many people do you think knew? Right. Yeah. I guess, I guess the word really knows, starts to. Yeah. Somebody like somebody knew. Some insiders knew. I think. Mm -hmm. Um. I actually. I wonder. These guys. The best way for them to cap the price is for them to get as much Monero as possible. And probably at this point, the best way for them to get as much Monero as possible, in addition to maybe um trying to mine some of it. You know, maybe there's some like deal with Bitmain or Nice Hash or whoever. Um. But then you know like. They could probably use these events and these things that they know about Scoop ahead of up. time. Yeah, so they can sell high, and then they know that people are going to swing trade and then buy low. Mm -hmm. And they can see all the inflows, right? Like, in terms of, you know, as far as Kraken and, and other exchanges and these, um, you know, the Insta Swap exchanges, they can, assuming that they, they are in partnership um, or that maybe chain analysis is at least buying the information from these exchanges, they can see inflows. They know when when the uptick begins. They know when the volume starts to increase. When when the bottom is near. So, mm -hmm. I mean, they they've got the tools to uh, to time this thing. So, in other words, like they probably know that their ability to limit Monero's price is coming to an end, and so they need to accumulate as much as possible until that time. Um, and you know, they'll do the same thing. Like it's it's the same thing with gold, right? Like. They, they they have a there's a limited ability that they have to suppress the gold price um and so you know they've got backup plan b plan c um for when it's time for the breakout to happen yeah i mean how many more hammers can drop right what do, what do we have left well we have crack in us that would be like that would be like the final the final leg right after that anything else would be insignificant oh uh, yeah yeah right crack in us for sure crack yeah in US. that's um that would surprise me a little bit. I feel I would like to think that Kraken would push back. At the same time, Jay Powell, Jesse Powell, not uh, not uh, Jerome Powell, uh, Jay Powell of Kraken, he stepped down as the CEO in 2022, like September 2022. So um, he's still on the he's still the chairman of the board. So you know, there's still like maybe a positive influence there. Um, but the FBI also raided his home in in 2023. And they said it was unrelated to crypto. They said that he hacked some, I don't know, some art people or something. Like he he hacked some art people and tried to do something allegedly. So they raided his home. It's like, get the fuck out of here. That's that is no, no, you just wanted an excuse to go raid his home and see if you could find any possible little thing that you could um to Wait, later I didn't even know when did this happen? When did his home get raided? This was oh, um, 2023. Yeah, the New York Times reported it. That uh, I think it was like July 2023. Jesus. So, um, it, they yeah. were accusing him of being involved in some, what was it? Some Something like a hack problem? against art people or something to do with art. I, I don't know, man. My The uh, details okay. <laughs> the details are fuzzy for me, but it was allegedly yeah. completely unrelated to crypto. But yeah, yeah. Just like they found, um, just like they found child porn on, uh, on Cody Wilson's computer. It's like, uh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. How the dude is, is, 
yeah, showing people how to how to do these guns or whatever the three D printed guns, and uh, how convenient it's like. It's just their go. I know it's 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 terrifying, right? That they they could just do that to freaking anyone. I mean, it's Jesus Christ, guys. That's why we just need we need a lot more of us, right? Because it, it's hard for them to do it to a lot of people. They could take out one or two, uh, but as we build momentum, it's gonna be it's gonna be very difficult for them to to stop stop all of us. They can't stop us all. The Area 51 meme was just like totally wasted on aliens. There's like so many. <laughs> There's a dozen other things we could use this for. But yeah, man. So we, what What other hammers can drop? Kraken US. What else we got? I guess they could maybe start banning it um, for corporate usage in general. You know, like I think it's, it's illegal to use in... Is it... Uh, Dubai, it's it's Japan a, and Dubai, maybe. Yeah, Japan too. I think. I don't think it's illegal for like individuals to use it. Still, uh, Dubai, it might be illegal for individuals to use it. I'm not totally sure on that one. But like corporations in Dubai are not allowed to use Monero, from my understanding at this point. Yeah, so just just making it illegal would be the next the next route. Yeah, well, it, it's going to be harder in the states, but you know we've kind of seen the breakdown of the rule of law here as well. Yeah, I mean, I, the good thing is this is all happening at a time when we're transitioning towards not needing centralized exchanges at all. We have Havino, which is starting to grow and gain gain some traction. We have Sarai Dex, that's right around right around the corner. Uh, and that, you know, that, that promises to really be a fluid way to go in and out of Monero and other cryptos without KYC AML and without having to go through like an exchange process. Um, so that's, that's going to be quite promising and, uh, it couldn't come at a better time. We have basic swap. We had them on the show, not as, not a, not completely there yet in terms of being super, super easy to use, but making a lot of headway and, and growing and purely peer-to-peer -peer based on atomic swaps uh completely unstoppable it's people just running their own software um so we have these solutions and they all are growing in momentum they're growing in their uh, their usability and they're growing in the amount of users that are using them so um monero appears to be as unstoppable as ever you know i was um i was looking at um trocador uh the other day and it was like all of the options for tour have gone away there's literally one option now that you can do a monero swap via mm. tour yeah i thought that was really weird like like everyone mm. um including exelix you can't yeah they won't they won't do a swap over tour now really hmm. yep yeah so i guess you have to make sure you have to go you have to exit tour to a vpn um to mask your tour usage if you want to use these so the only the only tour op the only instant swap off uh, still offering tour access is what oh i don't remember let me go to trocador mm. well trocador itself you could access by a tour right yeah you can get you can access trocador by tour but you can't um mm. but like once you try to make the swap and you see the listing um mm. you uh you can't you can't actually like none of the none of the you offerings none of the exchanges so what you get downgraded to the clearnet address. Um, yeah, well, I, it's not that you get downgraded. It's just like they're grayed out. It's like, hey, you could use this, but you're on tour right now. So you, you, you wow. can't use so this, did, this, this, or this option. Specifically excluded Trocador from uh, allowing anyone to make a trade through their tour, their onion, even though it's going through them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I see. They've like opted out, essentially. Let me see here. Let me just put in like a trade. Maybe I can show you guys. Fascinating. Oh, wait. I've got to get to the tour. Um, yeah, I didn't plan on showing that. So let's uh, I can let probably go to onion. Fair if you need me to. Surprised they don't have their uh their don't have their onion uh header because their onion address doesn't show up if I just go to trocador.app doesn't request going to trocador. <laughs> Sam Bent is referring to uh, banning Monero. Making it illegal will increase the value, just like drugs or anything else. Yeah, that's that I, sounds I nice, but that's I don't I don't I actually don't agree with that. Um, I mean, no. maybe maybe a little bit. It's maybe not a exciting. Bit. 
It's just that, like, the problem is that people are addicted to drugs. People fucking love drugs. <laughs> like, who doesn't <laughs> like drugs? Like, very few people don't at least like some drug, even if it's just coffee, bro. Um, so, so the problem is that, like, drugs market themselves, right? People have, like, this demand for drugs. Um, and so you make them illegal and, you know, people still yeah, want but them. But they use Monero as a tool to obtain them <laughs> in many ways. So, uh, if, you know, the, the desire to use Monero will still exist, right? The utility, even if it's for yeah. things like that. Yeah, right? I mean, that's, that's there's, there's, there's no truth in that. There's really no other way to run a dark market without Monero right now. I mean, unless you want to really take a high risk. So not, you know, I'm not saying that's, that's right or wrong, but uh, Monero is the best tool for it. And there's definitely a need and people are going to, people are going to use it for that purpose. That, that would okay, be my cool. take on that. What, what, what does the price need to be for it to sustain that market? Uh, I guess you could do the math on that. Onboard users tip 25 cents. Tux, I helped an Uber driver set up a Monero.com wallet on iOS. I wasn't able to scan his QR code. I think because his phone was set to dark background. I've had these issues before. Don't know wallet version, but would have been current iOS version as of 4th of August. Just user feedback. Oh, yeah, really? Tux, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sure why dark mode would have prevented the QR code from being scannable um, on iOS because we don't really do anything based on the OS uh, theme at all. So that's something uh, I'll, I'll see if there's a ticket open for that internally already. It's interesting. Neil, yeah, so twenty twenty three. Hold on, uh, buddy. Making Monero legal just push everyone to use it by Tor instead of ClearNet. It can't be stopped anyway. Yeah, agreed. So here's what Body was talking about. Uh, as yeah. you can see, we've got three options here: Exolix, we like Exolix, mm -hmm. uh, Alpha Cash, and Wizard Swap. Wizard Swap is very based. Uh, three options. Everything else, they do not allow Tor I2P trades to happen. So out of these, one, two. Bump your bump your amount. Bump it to like something past ten thousand, and see if that changes things. It's like point two BTC. Point, yeah. Oh, so let me change it right here. Let's edit. There we go. Are you supposed to screencast with Tor? <laughs> no, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> Tor, Tor's your opsec, bro. It's ruined. Oh, Obviously. no, they can see the size of my browser window. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As we speak, the feds watching this show are like, aha, look at the look at the resolution on it. I probably do have a slightly <laughs> custom fingerprint, though, because as you can see, I have uBlock and Bitwarden. Oh, snap. Yeah, actually. It, you know, I, I, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I change the resolution of the browser. Like, I'll, I'll make the screen bigger or smaller. It's like... Come on, are you gonna are you gonna find me that way? I don't probably not. Still got three options. Same. Still ones. okay. Same okay. ones. And this is maybe it just happened to be. Yeah. Okay. So I am seeing Exolix on here. The other day I was looking at it and um, there was I don't remember which one was available, there was, but there was only one and, and I was like, wait, Exolix is 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 not on there. It's like, not many options, but there are a few still. Yeah, there's where definitely you can, fewer where you can access. Me. You're accessing it via Tor right now, Tux, is what you're saying. This is correct. You can see oh. the onion link at the top of his yep. of the webpage. Mm -hmm. Very cool, very cool, very cool. All right. So body's just spreading false fake news, man. Body's trying to drive down the price <laughs> of an arrow. I was spreading my truth, bro. I was spreading the truth as I see it. Or at least as Buddy I saw obviously it, like, sold. At the Buddy obviously of the crash. sold, and now he's trying to crash Monero. I was the uh, Fed boy that that was selling down price at the top. All right, well, give, give us your. I mean, well, I don't even know what's happening. Has it since bounced back up? I haven't really been following it closely. I would like. Are we anywhere near my two hundred two number for Monero Topia no. in one month? I mean, define Bring it me. back. <laughs> Um, we're, we're, you know, we're coming back. We've, we've had a bounce back. Um, you can see here we yeah. had the, so all of yeah. this, all of this junk right here, one, two, three, four, five, looks like five or six days. Um, almost a week there that things were just crashing. Ah, sorry. Hang on. I got a, had a when is the mock. actual delisting date? Oh, um, like one of the, yeah. Yeah. So October 31st, they're going to halt all trading and deposits for people registered in the EU. 
um, and they're going to close any open orders. And then December 31st is the withdrawal like deadline. So get your get your Monero off of Kraken before New Year's, apparently. If you're in the uh, any European economic region. Yeah, yeah, only for EU people. I mean, like you said, they're running out of firepower. Like Kraken is Kraken is the last major exchange. After anyone else delists, I, I it's hard to see that it's gonna matter hardly at all. Yeah, I mean see, I can maybe. at least appreciate Kraken because they've been they it seems like they have been somewhat dedicated, at least compared to the others, to trying to keep Monero as long as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Although, and nothing so you know, sketchy you could with say it. that's you could say that that's um you know that was just part of their long game, right? Like they saved Kraken for their for their back end firepower after they exhausted Binance and their other options. You know now, but at, um, at what point does the you know the, the the feds right the the states around the world uh, that are essentially the ones behind these these listings that are putting the pressure on exchanges to delist? Uh, at what point do they realize? that the only way they can gain some insight into who's using Monero and what they're using it for and gain any insight at all is to have people come through centralized exchanges to obtain their Monero. Like, it's like, why would you be taking this approach? They're literally pushing it off into the fringes and, and putting fuel to the fire and allowing it to, to grow stronger and stronger as opposed to, you know, trying to, to work with it, which we've seen them do with Bitcoin in a very effective way, right? To the point where we we say here that it's been co-opted, right? It's like fully integrated into the, the current the current fiat system. They're surveilling it. No, they know everybody that's obtaining their Bitcoin. They can see it moving. I mean, if they want to gain any insight into how people are using Monero, they need to at least, the only thing they could try to do is have them come through an exchange you know, and they could try to figure out at least who the who the players are, at least know who's using it. That Why would a, they it is give that point. away? Uh, it is a good point. I, I would say that. Um, I, I would say that that they might still have some reasonably good methods. Maybe they have some reasonably good methods of determining who's using Monero. So, for example, if you're running a node um, and you're not going over Tor, um, you know, maybe maybe they can figure that out. But it seems like most people are going to be using a VPN at least. Probably maybe most VPNs are honeypots, so they're like confident that even if you're using a VPN, they can still see your Monero usage, your Monero node. Um, <clears throat> maybe they have other methods. I, I don't know. I mean, even if it's not a honeypot, it's still like most people are going to probably be using VPN paths that exist only within their own country, right? Because it's, it's faster. And, you know, like if you're using a VPN in the United States, uh, the 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 VPS companies and the data centers they're they're logging regardless of whether the VPN company is or not. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's that is a good point. The ISPs are like a huge weakness, especially with traffic analysis and and that kind of thing and timing attacks. Like, who's to say that they haven't just like made very sophisticated timing analysis attacks and signatures? Um, especially with growing bandwidth, like that could be like a negative aspect of growing bandwidth is that they have the overhead. Like, I'm just thinking out loud here, so, um, but it seems to me that with, with large bandwidth, you would have the overhead to introduce slight timing attacks so that you can, you can still um, correlate people's activity from one side of the VPN to the other. Yeah, uh, I do like what Molvat is doing with their DAITA thing. It's like D-A-I-T-A, some, you know, A-I, whatever. They're, they're basically padding packets, so they all look the same, and they're adding noise to... Um, your your VPN connection to try and obscure um, the real data that you're you're actually using the real connections you're making uh, to try and uh, help prevent timing attacks, but that's a hard thing to do. Do you know if um, my VPN is doing the same thing? Uh, I'm not sure. Let's see. We have a we have XMR XMR chat from Nihilist. Uh, he tipped. 0 0.008 Monero. He says that making Monero illegal will just push everyone to use it via Tor instead of ClearNet. It can't be stopped anyways. Yeah, I definitely, 100%. Or I2P. Is anyone out there, any chads out there using I2P to run their Monero node? Not I. We have it uh, integrated into Nodo. 
I never um like in in all my social media forays I've I've I don't think I've seen even maybe maybe one maybe two people that have that, that have talked about using Monero over I2P. It's got to be somebody just for fun. I guess not. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um I guess we can just uh, hop into the price here. So, okay, yeah, we we had the uh, we had the crack and deal listing. We dropped there for a week. Um, again, this is another reason why I like Wave Magic so much. You you smash right into the lower standard deviation area. Um, it, it's also like you know, it's also the same spot that we bottomed for the last times that we had the various uh, negative price events, and then yeah, just came right back to the upside. Um, as of the past like couple hours, we've had a little bit of a cool off here, but um, but nothing nothing major. So, um, I would, I would imagine that as long as there's no major downside forces, um, uh, for the broad crypto, uh, markets that we should continue to make it to, towards the upside. We're basically at 150, which is the stable coin price of Monero. Um, occasionally we foray into 170 or maybe even 180 occasionally. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously I'd like to see this thing get up to the top side. I, I honestly, I don't care. It can go down, it can go back down and I can just buy more or it can go up and I can spend more. Um, you know, whatever, whatever Monero wants to do here uh, is fine by me. So um, other than that, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm trying, I'm thinking to myself, what's the next thing that they can do to really try and smash Monero's price to the downside apart from, you know, a broader market crash? Uh, I'm not seeing much, guys. Like, what are they going to do? They're going to delist in the United States? Maybe, maybe, maybe what they'll do is they'll find isolated states to then like try to, you know, poke it crack and be like okay it's not in new york uh, let's delist it from california now right like that would be my next guess like if you if i had to make my most educated scientific wild ass guess uh, i would say they they might start going after crack into delist in particular states where they've got the political will to make that happen so um you know and then of course the first the, the first one will be the most impactful because they'll be like oh my god now they're coming for the u.s uh, so just keep that in the back of your mind. That could happen. Um, let's see. We have bounced back, obviously bounced back a little bit here with, uh, respect to Bitcoin in terms of the Monero versus Bitcoin price. Again, you know, same thing with wave magic here. You've got this, you form these, these bands, you form these lower standard deviations. Um, we didn't quite make it all the way down there. It, you probably can't see that. So I'll draw this. This is the, the moving average cluster. And these are short-term moving averages, right? The, the longer-term ones are, are on the bigger chart up here, right? I'm, I think you guys can actually see that. Maybe let me zoom in a little bit here. That might be easier to see. Um, and also, you know, um, if you're on YouTube, go to the 1080p charts, and you'll be able to see the lines much more clearly. Uh, yeah, so um, that's, again, why I like these standard deviations, why I like this wave magic so much, um, because it really, uh, it really does help you um, to visualize where some key levels are. It's not perfect, and it's despite its its nomenclature, it's not exactly magic. Um, but, you know, it's the closest thing we got. So basically, Monero found support here at the moving average cluster uh, re relative to Bitcoin, and we're making a bit of a bounce here. Um, in terms of wave magic, I would probably be targeting this area for, um, like if you're a trader, you know, if you're flipping, <laughs> like let's suppose you're, um, you're flipping between Monero and Bitcoin on a regular basis, um, on uh, on Simple Swap or, or some of these other decentralized exchanges, is it Simple Swap? I think it's Simple Swap. Um, anyways, yeah, I would be looking to hit the the standard deviation clusters in blue, and you know, then you might flip back into Bitcoin. I would never ever recommend flipping back into Bitcoin, but uh, if you are so inclined, that, that might be that you would try and do it. Um, through the delisting nonsense, um, basically what's interesting is that nothing changed with the divergences relative to Kraken. Everyone basically kept their price relatively close to Kraken. Polo is still, as usual, schizophrenic, you know, just oscillating up and down to the tune of 1%, um, around the Kraken price, but they probably don't have any Monero anyways. And if they do, it's probably, it's probably just like bot trading and nonsense. So, um, yeah, they don't really matter that much. Um, maybe Q coin actually kind of matters. Yeah, actually, you know, let me, let me walk a step back here. Q coin and Mexi, hypothetically, if they were going to try and delist Monero from further exchanges, those might be somewhat impactful ones. Cause I think that those guys actually do some Monero trading. Like people actually, I think do trade a little bit on those exchanges. They, they do have some volume. Um, especially when Binance shut down, I think Q coin took over a lot of that, a lot of that volume. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, that could be a case. I think Qcoin is being, uh, currently attacked by the fed boys. I don't know what the latest is on that. That was like maybe almost a year ago that that was happening. So, um, Monero versus gold continues to be sort of in the, on the downside of this trend, um, hanging out largely in between the, the long-term standard deviation, lower standard deviation, and then the shorter term standard deviation. So that's where it seems to be hanging out. Um, gold this week has been largely flat. In fact, for the most part, markets were relatively flat this week. Um, we'll talk about the macro in a bit. Um, effectively, kind of just neutral. Um, markets showing a little bit of strength, like, hey, we're not quite ready to crash yet. Um, let's see, check in the comments. Uh, Jack needs to bring, Jack said, need to bring back local Monero. Yeah, it would be nice if local Monero came back, but hey, maybe, maybe it's good that they left because when local Monero was that easy for us, um, we didn't actually do the more properly decentralized um, methods of trading, right? Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's too bad. There was a lot of trust there, too, with that platform in particular. Um, so, yeah, that's that's basically what the Monero price looks like. Uh, let's take a look at the dominance. Monero dominance looks very similar to Monero versus Bitcoin for obvious reasons. Bitcoin dominance has been doing pretty good. Um, yeah, nothing to, nothing to see here. Privacy coins in general. Uh, we'll start with Xano. They are still consolidating um, after their big run to the upside. There's not a huge impetus at the moment, I think, to push things too much higher in a, in a general sense um, for, for the privacy coins. Um, you know, maybe the Kraken delisting, perhaps, right? Perhaps that, that could, the, re the reverse reaction from that on a medium-term basis, perhaps that could be the impetus necessary for Xano to go to the upside. Um, but at the moment, you know, this is still consolidation. And I don't know, let's draw some dubious lines here just, just because. Um, so maybe it could look something like that. I mean, hypothetically, you could see this kind of consolidation pattern happening for the rest of the year on the basis of what we've now seen um, for, I guess you would say, for about a month here. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, it would be hard to say. I wouldn't be able to tell you that Xano is going to break out sooner or later. Um, but it is kind of a pennant formation that's that's starting to develop here. So, yeah, patience if you're a Xano holder, I guess. I would I would probably still have some patience. This is the kind of, like, if you bought Xano, if you smartly bought down here and you have gains, one, it's never wrong to take profit, this is true, but two... If you smartly didn't put a significant amount of your net worth in Xano, like if you if you fucking YOLO'd onto Xano, then you might take some profits right here. You're up 3x. Um, but if you just put a little bit of cash onto there, said, hey, you know, this is an outside player. Maybe it'll hit. Um, if I'm you, <laughs> or if, if I'm me, I'm leaving that in Xano. You're just going to let that sit for two years, guys, until one year, two year, whenever the top of the next blow off is, you're going to let that shit sit there because you don't know if this thing can do another 10x, right? It could hypothetically do another 10x. Xano is very low market cap. Um, so this thing could, you know, I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not predicting 10x, right? Like, please, I'm not predicting 100x, but it could. Stuff, that happens, right? And um, and Xano is an interesting project, right? So it's uh, it's being run by a guy that was one of the early guys in Monero. Uh, and he seems like a good dude. He seems like an honest dude. He doesn't give any, um, you know, red flags or spidey, spidey sense tinglies that he's, you know, nefarious, whatever. Um, so the point is, anyways, guys, if you want to make big life-changing gains, you have to give yourself the opportunity to make those gains. And that's why I say, like, put a small amount of your net worth onto a play like this, because if this thing does do a 5x or a 10x from here, and you bought some small, you know, you bought some down here, you really could be looking at significant cash for yourself. Um, and because you put a small amount of your net worth, it's like, hey, if, if I lose everything, I'm still okay with it, right? That's powerful because it gives you the mindset that says, hey, I don't need to touch this. I'm just going to let it ride, whatever. Um, the biggest gains you're going to make in, in a lot of cases are going to be the stuff that you bought and then you just let it sit and then you woke up one day and you're like, oh, wow, that's crazy. I didn't expect that. Um, at least, you know, that's, you know, it's kind of how it's happened um, for me from time to time. So, okay, Firo is still doing um, this probably <laughs> a bottoming pattern. I think we called this a double W bottoming pattern last week. Um, so I don't know if that will play out or not. Again, I just made that up. I don't think that's in the textbook, but um, yeah, Firo still kind of bottoming. Um, you can kind of look at the wave magic and say, okay, here's our upper standard deviations on the long term. Here's where they have kind of started to settle out on the short term. So perhaps some kind of consolidation in there. I would say to watch for wherever this thing breaks. I would say that it's probably one break to one side or the other will happen. Um, 
But hypothetically, if Zano ends up in this zone, right, break that resistance, break that resistance, break that resistance, and then kind of like sits here for a second and consolidates, that's when you know the thing's about to go up, right? So that's that's what you'd be looking for to really take a long here. If you wanted to, you could take a little bit of a long down there just to, again, small amounts, not, not big amounts, um, and then just let it sit. If there's a big crash coming in a general sense, right, it's possible the bottom on this thing could fall out for a moment here in November, December before coming to the upside. That'll be the case for like basically everything that we look at. So, um, yeah, um, Pirate Chain, I think we talked about last week that um, this thing has this like this crazy oscillation going on here to the tune of about 20 percent. I don't know what their liquidity looks like. Actually, you know, I'm going to write I'm going to write this down. Look at liquidity for Pirate um, because if it's very low liquidity, you wouldn't be able to really leverage this to any significant gains. But because of this oscillations, because it has these crazy wick oscillations, you could do like some simple math. It doesn't even have to be like the perfectly correct math. It could just be like pleb math. And you could say, okay, what's the average off oscillation? What's the standard deviation? Whatever. Like what's the, the quartile or the 10% oscillation level? And then buy and sell on these oscillations. Um, obviously, you need a platform that can support whatever amount of money that you're using to do that with. Um, but if you wanted to, you could take advantage of Pirate and and these oscillations here and, and make money on that because that's that's a very very rapid oscillation. That these are these are daily oscillations here um, and daily wicks. You could just like set an alert if you wanted to. Um, probably, I would just set orders. Uh, maybe. Um, and I always forget what it's called. What's that? What's that um, exchange that we use a lot? That not we use, not we, but um, like the the anarchists in Mexico were using it for a while um, to trade Monero. I always forget the name of it. Well, anyways, obviously I don't really use it that much. Trade ogre. <laughs> I remember trade ogre. Thank you, thank you, sir. Love trade ogre. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So I, I need to get on like trade ogre and and check the pirate volume there because there is money to be made on this chart if someone wanted to do it. If someone wanted. To I don't use it, it, but I love it. Just for uh, legal reasons. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah, I, I, I kind of feel the same way. Like, I don't really use it. I think I tried once, and I was like, wait, my order's not filling. Oh, there's shit liquidity. Oh, okay, I get it. Uh, maybe the liquidity's better now. I don't know. Um, let's see. Uh, I think we've got a... If you want to put the uh, the latest XMR chat, we have Green Tree. Uh, Green Tree, who tipped 0 0.065671838023 XMR. Uh, he says, thank you, body. Last week, you mentioned privacy coins will get lots of attention after the next liquidity expansion. What was the reason you got cut from the stream early? Oh, yeah, man. Mexican internet. Sometimes it just doesn't want to work. Um, yeah, so the, the reason um, that privacy coins, I think, are going to get a lot more attention is simply because after all the, the attacks that we've seen over the past year or so in terms of privacy, I mean, they they hit Tornado Cash and then they hit the Samurai guys. And all of the maximalists are kind of saying like, oh, wait, like, hmm, maybe we were, I shouldn't say all, but a lot of the maximalists. And I'm seeing this anecdotally in my own like acquaintances, my own friends, um, and on the social medias, all but the most hard-headed, degenerate, scumbag, moon boy, cultist maximalists are now kind of like, yeah, okay, Monero is, Monero does seem kind of reasonable at this point. And um, I know anecdotally what I saw in 2021 was very hardened against Monero. Everyone was like, oh, they're just going to delist it. They're just going to, they didn't even say delist. They say ban. They're just going to ban it. And uh, and 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 it's going to be illegal for the, you to use. And it's never going to go up in price. And so don't use it. And, and it's only for criminals. I saw all of that shit across, like ubiquitously across most of social media. I don't see that anymore. What I see is people that are actually like, yeah, Monero is an honest, um, an honest project. Monero, um, Monero is a good project. Like I see positive vibes towards Monero. It's it's giving positive vibes um, for Monero. So I know that's anecdotal, but you have to realize that anecdotal fallacy is kind of like it's a fallacy of a fallacy in a way. Like anecdotal experience using that to make decisions is not a fallacy as long as you understand the kind of statistical power that it has, um, and you can at least like kind of estimate, guesstimate. Um, how well you have a finger on the pulse of the thing that you're looking at, like in a social, particularly in this case, in a social sense. Um, <laughs> all right, I, I, I got I to gotta tell this one because this one's pretty funny. Um, I think maybe I've said this before, but let me explain why anecdotal experience, how powerful it can actually be. I have a friend, uh, a Russian friend, and I was like, yo, like how many people, like how many black people are there in Russia? And she was like, none. Like <laughs> I said, okay, well, 
through your entire life, how many black people in Russia have you ever seen? And she was like, I don't know, like three. And so we did this. Okay. Well, the population of Russia is a hundred thousand. Then I said, okay, for a girl this age, how many people has she probably seen in her entire life? Um, you know, in Russia. And we did some basic quick math. We said, okay, maybe there's about 50,000 black people in Russia. And then it was like, the answer was 40,000. I was like, holy shit. Like that's, that's insanely close on the basis of one person's anecdotal experience. But when you understand, um, when you understand like the statistical limitation of the power, like the stati statistical power that you have, um, then you can actually use your anecdotal experience to make inferences. So that's a nice like little side thing right there on anecdotal fallacies. There's a, a side rant that has nothing to do with price today, but um, it's an interesting kind of like anecdote, <laughs> if you will, um, about, uh, about how to use that uh, kind of thing. So to finish up with this answer, um, we just see broad positivity in, in the cryptosphere for Monero that didn't exist in the last bull market. Um, and, and people are starting to realize how big the attack that the government has launched against us really is, and they want to defend themselves. So it just, it just spells like a much higher probability and chance of Monero pumping that. And also the fractional reserve game that they played last year or last, last cycle, um, is really going to be difficult for them to continue. Um, they can probably, they probably still have some firepower. Like I said, it's still there depending on how compromised Kraken might be that, you know, they might still be able to do things, but yeah, I mean, just the totality of it there's a good chance that we do we do very well this um this next bull market okay continuing i support darrow darrow price um yeah has taken a pullback for the last week maybe we'll go to the daily you see kevin's um, uh xmr chat kevin's uh oh no i did not thank you sorry um okay so kevin uh tipped 16 cents uh 0 0.001 monero does future trading uh futures trading of xmr on these exchanges still affect monero prices after delisting XMR. Um, let me think about this for a second. Is there going to be futures trading of XMR in these changes? Because Binance um, still allows some futures trading on XMR, doesn't it? Uh, okay, so it's like purely... A, I, I don't know. I haven't checked. Let me um, let me make a note here to futures trading on delisted. I mean, usually futures trading would imply uh, the ability to settle in the asset itself. If you can't do that, then it's really just a derivative contract. Um, but futures trading on delisted exchanges. Uh, I'm going to check that out because maybe that's there. Um, but if they're doing futures trading, I would say probably not. Um, it, it seems like the only thing that they could be doing is derivatives trading, which is settled completely outside of, um, you know, of Monero itself, right? Like there's no there's no Monero deposited you might deposit Bitcoin to make a bet on what the Monero price is going to do and use your Bitcoin or your Tether as collateral um, for the contract. Um, but, but, the, but you don't actually, you, you'd never be able to settle an XMR. You'd never be able to put up XMR as the collateral for that trade. And as such, it might do something like take away from the volume. Like people that want to swing trade Monero might go to those platforms to swing trade the derivatives contract but because there's no real Monero involved there, I would think that it should have the only impact that it would have is sort of secondary in the sense that those people aren't trading real Monero anymore, whereas they might have comp uh, comprised some kind of volume um, towards like a larger order book. Um, so perhaps in one way you would say it might help volatility to be lower because the swing traders, the DGENs have gone elsewhere to pure derivatives contracts. At the same time, though, that's less liquidity on the order book, um, and less liquidity implies more volatility. So um, probably there's some complex equation analysis that, uh, well, I just haven't done. I'm probably not going to do it. Um, I couldn't even say that I'm smart enough to do it in the first place, um, or that I would even have the proper information uh, to try and hazard such an analysis. Um, but yeah, there's your answer there. Uh, let's see, Darrow. I don't know. I don't have anything to say about Darrow. Let's just not even cover it right now. Zcash. Hey, Zcash made a little, little comeback here. After it tagged these lower standard deviations, has come back 15%. Wait, wait, did Zcash dip? <laughs> hang on, hang on. <laughs> Maybe this is just happenstance, but it looks like Zcash dipped with Monero when when Kraken announced the delisting of Monero in the EU. But there was no announcement of delisting of Zcash in the EU. So I don't know what's going on there, but okay. Zcash, yay, I guess. Whatever. Okay, so let's go to... Um, Go to Daddy. Let's go to Daddy Coin, which is not Tate Coin, but Bitcoin, obviously. Um, just joking. Okay, so we're still in this like 
boring, broad, broadening structure range, right? We, we're still in this sort of like capping, descending line. Um, and I don't see any reason to think that this should be broken in, in the immediate future here. I think that it makes sense for this to continue trading in this fashion. Um, this is kind of resembling to what we saw in 2020. At the end of 2020, Bitcoin hadn't quite broken out yet. Um, and, uh, and Bitcoin was really just kind of capped for a period of time in, in a narrow range until it finally broke out. Um, so yeah, we're, it, it might be the case that Bitcoin is just not going to break this range until the next liquidity expansion event is upon us. And again, um, I really am targeting November, December for this thing to happen. Um, you know, obviously that's, that's my best guess and it's a difficult thing. It's a, it's a very, very low probability thing to call a market crash. Like that's, unless it's like incipient and happening in the present moment or just, you know, just getting started. It's pretty hard to predict a market crash um, in, uh, in in the macro markets and the stock markets. Your probability of doing it's very low. Nevertheless, I still think that um, all of the indicators are there. It's a question of if, not when, at this point. And so, in my mind, I'm saying, well, the when um, should be here in the next couple months. I think that makes the most sense. But again, guys, you know, I'm I'm not uh, <laughs> I'm not Nostradamus. Okay, I'm not like like I don't know everything. Okay, so anyways, um, yeah, Bitcoin is just consolidating here. Probably will continue to consolidate. It, it does look like it's like slightly on the positive end of this curve. It almost looks like maybe maybe it wants to get up here. If you see it doing that kind of that kind of trading, and then it does that, okay, then maybe it can come to the upside. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't have any opinions exactly how to trade Bitcoin right now. In my personal opinion, that would be kind of no man's land, like in terms of the way that I like to to think about markets and trade and get into positions. That's a no man's land position for me. I, I would just say, yeah, that's, uh, that's a no trade. I would look for something else, something that has greater clarity. What the hell? Okay, maybe has there been? I maybe I haven't been following closely enough, but um, FTT just pumped like insanely. That that is a lot. That's a seven standard deviation pump um, for FTT. Um, maybe there's some resolution to the trial or like the speculation of a resolution. People are going to get paid back. Man, I don't know. That's crazy. Uh, crap. Let's go look at. Uh, let's, let's go look at it actually. Um, oh, which one do I want to destroy? FTT USDT. Oh, how much did they gain? Ah, it's only a two X. Okay, they've been really flat for the past like year, so I guess that would kind of explain it. Um, all right, well, there's your shit coin for the for boys and girls. Um, FTT apparently is the coin to have bought and to have purchased. Shorting FTT boys. Yeah, maybe you could short it now. I'm not sure if shorting would be. I wouldn't no, short it's too it. Late. Here. It's too late. Oh, it's it's not like hypothetically. Oh, yeah. I mean, in in, in terms of like the long term, let's go back to. If we're gonna buy, yeah. No, I. I mean, yeah. If you if you were to take a short right there, what was that? Oh, that was twenty twenty two. Oh shit! You know what? I was short FTT. There, that was that was one of the tokens I was short, and I was playing with cross margin. I got wiped out because Dog did a two X when Musk bought Twitter. I was so sad. I was like, fuck. <laughs> I was oh, like, yeah. and that was kind of the, one of the last times I was playing with leverage. Um, but I was I was like experimenting with cross margin. I was short a whole bunch of stuff, including dog. Um, but then when dog pumped two X, it just wiped me out. It wiped out all of my short positions. So I was pretty sad at that moment because it wasn't a huge amount, but it wasn't an inconsequential amount. I would have made a pretty penny if, if I hadn't gotten wiped out and liquidated um, <laughs> on that one. Confession times, confessions of body on the price report. Okay, you know what? Let's go to the Bitcoin um Bitcoin versus gold. So someone last week uh, had asked me to do the regression analysis, not on the Bitcoin USD chart, but on the Bitcoin versus gold chart. Um, and I got to tell you, there's only two lines here. We've got the bottom and the top line, right? We've only got the boundaries. Um, this regression is not nearly as clean as the regression uh, of Bitcoin versus the US dollar, which is kind of surprising because you think that gold might introduce some kind of stability there. I don't know why that, um, that it hasn't. But uh, at any rate, this is kind of what it looks like. Um, you know, I, I, I trust this chart less than I trust the the U.S. dollar regression analysis. Simply again, because it's this chart is not as clean. I had to do some more arbitrary stuff, and like I, I won't get into all of it. But like there were some things I had to do that you would consider to be somewhat dubious in a mathematical sense. Um, so it's like you you sort of border on on the edge of applying the tool incorrectly. 
And in doing so in statistics, you might completely invalidate whatever thing you think that you have um, that you have arrived at, whatever conclusions you might have arrived at. Nevertheless, with my disclaimer out of the way so that uh, the financial bros don't sue me um, for all my financial advice. Uh, yeah, we are actually looking like we're approaching the, the lower boundary here. So in a sense, um, it, it almost looks like it's about time to flip your gold into Bitcoin. Um, but when it's time to flip your gold into Bitcoin, it, that really means it's time to flip your gold into probably some other higher beta, higher volatility, um, higher risk, higher reward cryptocurrency. Um, in, in a very slight way, this kind of makes me think that we, again, this, this is like the slightest of point in favor of the crash of some kind of like liquidity intervention could be coming sooner rather than later. Um, because when the liquidity intervention kicks off, Bitcoin is going to outperform gold. Gold has been outperforming Bitcoin here for a while now, for like most of the year. Um, gold will continue going up after the liquidity event intervention, but so will Bitcoin. But the thing that gold does, gold likes to start going up before the crisis happens. We've seen this classically now um, since 2008. Gold will go up and then, um, and then the rest of the markets will tend to follow. There will be a crash. It will be limited for gold. Gold will continue going up, but then the rest of the markets will start catching up. So if we get a crash here, this, this chart is telling you that, um, that yeah, it's, it's about time to flip your gold into, into crypto uh, or into Bitcoin. So um, I think that's an interesting thing. That's, again, it's not totally not as totally airtight of a statistical case that I would like it to be, but, um, but perhaps a signal, perhaps useful. So, um, yeah, that's Bitcoin versus gold uh, on the regression analysis. Um, with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the macro. I think we're starting to get long in the tooth here on this report, so we'll try and um, power or speed through the macro stuff. Uh, gold, as we talked about, is now um, touching that that resistance line. This is completely expected for it to have a little bit of uh, resistance here, um, given that given the how long this chart pattern is. Again, going back to 1980 with the first gold blow off after um, Nixon protected us against the speculators, uh, which is what he told us he was doing, um, where they allowed gold to float, where they depegged gold from the U.S. dollar completely. Um, still, this chart, uh, we, are in a gold, we are in a bullish gold scenario here. Technically speaking, it could take until the end of the decade for this chart pattern to break. It probably won't take that long, given that, um, that the next liquidity expansion is probably upon us. This thing is going to eventually break, probably find some resist uh, find some support and then maybe go to the upside or maybe it just doesn't even care maybe it just breaks it who knows whatever um yeah so the the theme with the macro for this week is that um hold on to your crash thesis it's not quite yet right that's that's kind of the idea of what i saw this week um so we had the reverse repos going towards the upside that's people leaving risk going into the safety of putting their money with the federal reserve Yes, yes, I know. Ha ha, the safety of, of bonds. Um, uh, please, please, I kid. But in the traditional perspective and, and very real perspective, being in a yielding in a bond that yields 5% um, is better than being in a, cra in a crash scenario in the stock market, right? And the government's good for it. They're just going to print the money to pay the bond anyways. So it's like, in a way, it is kind of safe. Um, it's a safety play, but so people had done the safety play, like the big money had done the safety play for a period of time. And this was actually a strong movement. Um, but that came back down this week. So it's like, okay, that is, that is probably money that left safety and went to risk, right? So it went to the stock market effectively. Um, obviously not crypto because crypto didn't really pump. I would also hazard to say that there is a, um, a broadening structure now happening on the reverse repos and that implies uncertainty and ever increasing oscillation of volatility. Um, I don't know which way this is going to go. In a crash scenario, probably this thing goes to the direction to the upside because people seek the safety of Federal Reserve. You get the overnight rate, federal funds rate for doing that. Um, yeah, so that's basically a broadening structure. I'm not really convinced how much um, uh, technical analysis is valid on this particular chart, but I think there's probably some validity to it. So... Yeah, this might increase, the, uh, this broadening megaphone pattern here might indicate some kind of uncertainty in the market um, in general. Let's see here, uh, Dixie, so the dollar index, interestingly enough, the dollar index came back, um, just ticked up a little bit, but nothing crazy, um, which is it, the fact that gold actually held its stable price, right? Gold held, um, basically kept, it, it was flat throughout the week. It didn't really go down, it didn't go up much. Um, even though the dollar index pumped, and usually these are anti-correlated. So that's actually strength that gold is showing here. The fact the dollar index went up 
um, but gold held its own. That 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 kind of implies um, a kind of strength that that gold performed with there. Um, and then bonds. So the other thing too is that um, is that bonds. Uh, the rate bond rates actually yields went up a little bit, which indicates people leaving bonds slightly and going into risk assets, right? Um, because rates tend bond rates tend to go up as people sell the bonds. Um, so yeah, the, the rates going up means that people were probably leaving a little bit bonds to go into risk. Um, in terms of the inversion, we still are the one of our measurements here went down a little bit, one of our measurements went up. So overall that was flat. Um, and then we had also talked about uh, oil um, previously. We said, hey, it fell out of its trend. It actually got back into its trend um, as of this past week. That was a big bump on the oil price. So again, it's kind of like the macro saying, yeah, not quite yet. Like, okay, the signs are there, but but um, maybe we're not quite ready to crash just yet. Um, but that's you know that's just one week of, of new data. So we got to see how things unfold. Um, who knows what kind of shenanigans might be going into the election um, and what kinds of things like they might kind of bullshit that might try to get pulled or whatever right like who knows um stock markets the s p put on i wouldn't say a new all-time high but i mean closing close the week at its all-time highs effectively um nasdaq still up but still kind of underperforming the s p overall um so you know one thing also again um the the unemployment we remember we talked about the unemployment that once it's past a certain point it it tends to spike up and that is like and that's it right like that's the recession that's the that's the crash um right now we've actually had one two months so we've had the past two months where the unemployment actually um came down so unemployment is not ticking up anymore and perhaps um you know perhaps the market isn't totally sure yet hey this thing's gonna crash oh and also by the way remember guys um remember that um that we don't we don't necessarily uh, we don't necessarily know exactly like when this is going to happen right At least, again I'm speculating um, okay so um, another thing that that slightly bothers me about the unemployment chart is that in almost all cases when it was time for the crash to happen so counter counter thesis time when it was time for the crash to happen we didn't see really any major pullback um, we didn't see a big pullback uh, of the unemployment it just continued spiking May maybe like right here just a little bit but that was one two months. Wait, hang on, one, two, three months where it pulled back for a period of time. So if the next unemployment numbers continue to drop or stay flat, you know, that's maybe, you know, I'll have to I'll have to note that um, as a counterpoint um, to my thesis here of, of crash sooner than later. Um, OK, with that, I don't think we have much else to talk about here. Monero transactions still twenty five thousand. Looks like our little bump up here hmm, above 30. That was just a, a temporary 4A, and now we're back down to our stable transaction levels, which appears to be 25,000. Um, and uh, let's check the chats, make sure I haven't missed anybody. Um, nope. Okay. Crash to the upside. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so very, fairly reasonable investor uh, on YouTube says crash to the upside, question mark. Um, yeah, it, I mean, don't forget that in the last, in, in 2019, the markets did massively pumped before the uh the medical intervention happened um in 2020 march of 2020 um markets did just smash to the upside right so uh, you, you have to keep that in mind because it is possible that you could be sitting on the sidelines waiting for a crash even as the market pumps and then if and if the dip doesn't happen right if you're waiting for the dip and the dip never comes then like you've just you just lost out which is why i'm like okay have something in the markets but also have some cash on hand have a strategy be prepared um and yeah, with that, guys, I, I'm going to hand it back. Just over do to everything you. right. Yeah, just make no mistakes, and you'll you'll win. There's actually a lot of truth to that, though. Like in in almost any sport and anything you do, like if you're new at something, the first thing to do is to stop making mistakes or make fewer mistakes. Like hitting the winner, hitting you know, smashing the the best shot, throwing the perfect punch. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely you should be aiming for that, but. The first thing is fix your mistakes, um, and that will that will yield you far better gains in any endeavor that you do um, before necessarily trying to you know to hit all the winners. Life advice with body anarchist. <laughs> Don't make mistakes. <laughs> all right, man. Amazing as always. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you for that that being that beacon of of, of guidance during these tumultuous times as always body for, for steering us through these these hard times <laughs> in, in Manera land 
Uh, yeah. Any, anybody that's that's concerned about these things, yeah, you didn't know what you signed up for, guys. I mean, Monero is is not welcomed on centralized exchanges, and there are arguments for why it is better off that way. So it's funny awesome, I think about how naive I was when I got into Monero and started like participating in the community. Um, I don't know. Was this back in 2018? I guess 2019. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, even, back then I didn't even have my bearings that well on, on markets. Like, I mean, I had like the, the fuzzy idea of the beginnings, you know, of what would sort of become the broad headline structure of, of how I see markets. But I didn't, I had no idea that we were in, in store for this kind of battle for all the stuff that was happening, that was going to happen with Monero with all these delistings and, you know, the fractional reserve. And I had no idea that the cryptocurrency space was <laughs> so that there were so many nefarious players behind the scenes screwing with, um, with price and screwing with everything. But you live, you learn. So naive. You were so naive. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's been a shock for all of us. Um, but you know, from from the get-go, right? This this thing was always meant to be adversarial versus the state. So uh for for crypto to function, we knew that there had to be a, a major battle that would that would be taking place at some point. It's funny, Monero was so good that in a way it kind of forced us all to walk the walk. We didn't like we like we talked about it, but I don't think we expected that like that was that this was going to be the path. And then Monero was like, it was so good that we said, well, it sort of forced us to to bring our actions and our thinking into alignment um, with uh, you know with what it was. But don't take that to mean I'm saying Monero's a deity, guys. Please, no maximalism. We're not evangelists. <laughs> <laughs> Although, speak for yourself, buddy. Speak for maybe yourself. yes, say yeah. Maybe we. You say Just, you were like, "Hey, spread the word." And like, yeah, we're not evangelists. That's kind of the problem, right? Like, we saw the maximalist stuff, and now we're like, "No, no, I'm not an evangelist." But maybe we gotta be a little bit more on the marketing side. Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, you obviously it depends how you're marketing. We just want people to know this utility exists, that the option exists. Monero is digital cash. I just want people right, to man. know they can pump my bags. Just. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for being brutally honest about it. Yeah, come, come pump our backs. <laughs>